When creating a multiplayer game, having a great lobby is crucial. This is where you choose your character and skins while your friends are taking too much time to join you and be ready. This is where the magic happens before starting to play together. Let's create a 3D car game for web browsers with React Refiber and Playroom for a seamless multiplayer experience with a matchmaking system. <laughs> Before diving into the project tutorial, if you are new to 3D web development and want to learn everything you need to know, discover React Free Fiber, the ultimate guide to 3D web development. My project-based course designed to help you bring your 3D website ideas to life. Link in the description below. Let's start by cloning my starter pack repository. Go to code, click here, the link will be in the description below. In the terminal, run git clone, paste the URL, and I will put it in a folder named r3f multiplayer lobby. Then let's open that folder, file, open folder, run yarn to install the dependencies and yarn dev to start the development server. You can access the project by clicking the link here. If everything goes well, you will have this cube you are able to rotate around. I found some good models we can use on Poly Pizza. For example, this workbench here, I will provide you all the link. I use a few of them and I created a Blender file with it. Here it is, it's just a few models that I found on Poly Pizza. Here are the models. Then I created a floor and some walls for the background. And I added just two plane with the image texture I generated using AI to create some nice wall decorations. The app I used to generate AI image is Leonardo.ai. I already used it in past tutorials, but use whatever you feel comfortable with. Of course, you can find the Blender file in the Git repository if you want to customize it, or you can create your own from scratch. Once you are happy with your scene, go to File, Export, GLB, GLTF, then in Public, create a new folder named models. Inside you can name the file as you want. Let's name it garage. Format GLB, include, you can keep the default one, it's in data, enable compression to reduce the global file size. And then export GLTF. Now we have it in our project inside models. Let's go to our experience. And instead of rendering this, this mesh, we will create a lobby component. So let's create new lobby dot JSX, export const lobby, and we want to render our 3D model. So const scene is equal to use gltf of models slash garage dot glb. We will return a primitive and the object will be equal to scene we get from the gltf file. Then a good thing to do is when we use use gltf to do use gltf dot preload to preload the model so it's loaded at the very beginning when our project start. Now let's go to experience and here display the lobby we just created. And instead of having the orbit controls here, because we will have a very different experience in the game and in the lobby, we will add it, but maybe we'll use camera controls. If we try to see what we have, it's all black because we don't have any lights. So let's start with an ambient light with a half intensity and it works fine but it's all flat because we don't have any lights right now. You might be wondering why in the Blender file we had nice looking light effects while we don't have any in our React Fiber project. This is because the lighting system in Blender and in 3.js are completely different. When we do the export, it doesn't export the light, so we have to create them manually. Me, I added some lights inside the Blender file to use it as a reference to know what I will do in thread.js. Before set up the light, when I reload the page, I appear here, so I have to move the camera. So let's change the default camera position. Go into app and here we will update it. Let's change it to 4.2, 1.5 and 7.5 and a higher field of view. 
If we reload, this is what we see, which is nice. Let's add the different light sources. We will replace the ambient light with the lights I already prepared. Let's disable it for now and this. And let's import the box. This is what we get right now. We still miss the shadow, so we will need to enable it. But I think the effect is a bit different because I scaled down the scene. So let's do the same. Here, we will create a group where we will wrap everything and scale it down. So scale is equal to 0 0.66. Okay, now it's a bit better. We will adjust the camera to zoom in a bit later. For now, it should be good. Let me explain to you how I set up those lights. Trust me, you don't want to spend the time with me to set them up. So let me show you how I did. I created a box I attached to the group. So the position is attached to the group. I'm using a point light. And let me show you if I re-enable the box. So we can set it to true or just remove it. And by doing this, I could know exactly where the light is positioned. So it helped me position them in 3D space. Of course, you can use a light helper, but I, I found this helpful to just use box. Once you are happy with all the positions, you can put visible to false. And then on the point lights, which is just a point with a different radius to display light. You can play with the intensity. Let's put a high one so you can see. Here you can see it's more powerful here. You can play with the distance. So it's how far it will be able to brighten zones. So let's put a very short one. Here you can see the impact of that light is restrained to that specific area. While if it's 15, it goes way wider and impact the whole scene. And ultimately you can play with the decay. Let's put one, which gives this. Or if you use 15, you can see it's way more restrained to that area too. Let's put it back to the value I used. And now let's add some shadows to this scene. What I did is I enabled shadow only on that light which is the orange one that is located a bit behind us here. But our model currently isn't displaying any shadow. We need to enable it. To do this in a use effect on the scene, we will go through all object of our scene. If it is a mesh, we will add cast shadow, but also receive shadow. And now you can see we have the shadows enabled, but we have those weird artifacts here. If you zoom, you can see it's a bit weird. To fix it, we need to add a shadow bias and a shadow map size to our light. Let's add it to our orange light. So shadow bias, we attach the value and here it's on the map size. On the width property, we say shadow map size. It's same for width and height. Now, if we look at our scene, we don't have this issue anymore and we have nice shadows. We will fine tune it a bit later, but for now, let's create our lobby enabling multiplayer into our project. We are using Playroom Kit to build multiplayer games in minutes. So go to setup. We'll need to add Playroom Kit. So let's copy it. Open the terminal, yarn add Playroom Kit. Once it's good, yarn dev hide the terminal, then go to main and we will add playroom kit before rendering our app. So we'll do insert coin from playroom kit dot then and then we render our react dom create root. If we do it, we have the default lobby. Let's add another one below. We have our two users, but it's not a custom lobby. It's the default one and we want to create our own lobby. If you want to make your own custom one, it's completely possible. Go to lobby here. Scroll down, advanced usage, and you can see how to make a custom one with skipping the lobby UI. What we do is here, insert coin, we can add additional options. Skip lobby, true. Now if we reload, we have our 3D scene. Problem is we don't visualize our player, we have to do everything manually, but it will be quite fast. Let's go to our lobby component, go on the top of it, and to get our players, const players, is equal to use players list and we can add true to refresh our component every time we have a new player that is joining or has a data updated. Then we can go next to our scene. So where is it here inside the main group? We will do players.map. So for each player, we will render a component. Here we'll have a group. The key will use player.id so we are sure it is unique and position is equal to index multiplied by 0 0.5 maybe by 2. We close our group and let's display a box here mesh basic material color is equal to white. Now we can see we have two cubes because we have two players. If I close this one you can see it disconnected this player and we have only one here 
let's join it again at bottom split here. By the way, it's Arc Browser. It's more convenient for video recording, but usually I use Google Chrome. And now we have the two cubes. Perfect. Before displaying the car models and to be able to switch between different cars, maybe we will adjust the camera because currently we are a bit too far. I'd like it to be more like here. So let's change it. First, we need a reference on our camera controls to be able to interact with it. Let's name it controls. Let's define it on top. Const controls is equal to use ref. And let's create a method that we name const adjust camera. Mm, put it below it. I don't like parade variables. Okay. Inside, we will call controls.current.setLookAt. This is our position of the camera and where we are looking at. So the position of the camera is the same we have here currently. And true is to animate the transition when we adjust the camera. What we will do is in a use effect, we will create a on says method that we'll call adjust camera. We will add an event listener when the window is resized and we call on resize, which calls adjust camera. And we return a clear event listener. So it stops listening to resized events. Now, if we try to resize the windows, you won't see it much because we didn't make it responsive based on the size we have available. To know the size available we have from the camera, we can get the viewport. It's equal to use three of state of viewport. Then let's display the viewport with console.log viewport dot width. Let's resize it. And you can see we have a value that is not updated and that doesn't correspond to what we want. To have the fresh value, we need to reload and it will display another value. Let's say the ideal size might be something like this, what we have, 11. Okay, I think we will use 10 to say it's our ideal viewport size. So let's create dist factor which is the distance factor, will be equal to 10. It is our ideal viewport size, divided by viewport width. And we change our camera position based on that. We multiply it by distance factor. By the way, we should also call adjust camera at the very beginning. So let's call it here. Now, if we reload, we have that camera animation. You can see it's not really evolving because the viewport is not updated. Instead, what we can do is console.log just to show you the value evolving. Viewport.getCurrentViewport. It's taking the camera, so we can do controls.current.camera and a vector. It will use 0, 0, 0. And now you can see if we move it, the width is evolving too. So instead of using viewport width, we can use this dot width. Let's try it. And you can see it's not perfectly placed where we tried to be. And this is because our camera is animated. So our viewport is not perfect because we calculate the viewport based on our camera, but it's animated. So it changed even after a simple way to fix it. Let's stop the console log. It's instead of using that camera, we will create a new camera. Let's name it camera reference dot current we will create a reference const camera reference is equal to user and let's go on top here we'll declare a perspective camera the reference is camera reference and we will just use it as a reference to calculate our viewport it will have no other impact than this we are not using it to do some rendering and now whatever our screen size we can resize we see exactly the same thing it is truncated perfectly and animated perfectly to display our scene. That's nice. Now, instead of displaying our two cubes, let's display cars. For this video tutorial, we'll be using the car kit from Kenny. Link will be in the description. You can download it. And it's also on the final project repository. Once you download it inside the models, create a new folder named cars and drag and drop the cars you want to use here. Here they are. I used a few of them. And to render them, let's create a new component. We name car.jsx, export const car. And first of all, on top of it, we create an array with the different model of cars we want to use. It has to have the exact same name of the GLB file here. So taxi is taxi.glb. Then our car props will be model. It's equal to car models of zero. So by default, the if you don't put a value, it will take sedan sports and then the rest of the props. So we can place it on the group, return group, 
which take all the other properties like the position. Then we load the GLTF file from the car model, use GLTF, we use model.glb. Now we have the scene, we can use primitive object scene. And let's preload all the car models. So when we will change our car, it won't need to load it. Everything will be loaded at the very beginning. Now let's go to our lobby. And instead of displaying our box here for our players, players, we will render a car. So we have two issues. We have two cars, but we can see only one. So the last one. And another issue is it is in the wrong um, rotation. Let's go to the car. Let's rotate it on the Y axis. Rotation Y is equal to deck to rod of 180 degrees. Now it's facing us, but we can only see the last one. It's because we are using the same car, but it's the same mesh that is reused and we only see the last one. To prevent that, we can just use clone from dry library and it will clone the mesh if it's the same. And now we have the same model displayed twice. By default, the car model is interacting too much to light. It's a bit plastic, so we can enhance the materials. So like we did earlier for the shadow, we loop through all object of our scene. And if it is a mesh, we will check the different material and change it accordingly. So if it's the window, we'll make it transparent and add some opacity. If it's the paint or wheel inside, we'll apply the exact same color, but we will change the metalness and roughness so it will react better to, to light. And for the shadow, we don't need to set them up manually. We can go to clone and use cast shadow. Now, if we look, we can see the shadow of the car here, the light reflection on the body of the car. To find the name of the material, I used Blender and looked at the material, but you could just do some console log and try. One last nice detail we can add is to make the, the car lights bloom. It would add a nice effect. To make it, we add a yarn add React 3 post processing, then yarn dev, then go into the app. And next to the experience, we add an effect composer and the bloom effect. If we just reload, nothing happens because we need to tell which material will bloom. Let's go back to our car. And now if the material is the light, we'll add some emissive property, which is the same than the color, with a high intensity and tone map to false. So it won't cap the light at one. Now the car lights are blooming nicely. Now before enhancing the car spacing and put our car as a player a bit highlighted, we will make the UI to be able to change between different cars. To create our front-end UI, I will be using Tailwind CSS, so it will be quite fast to do so. Let's copy it here. Yarn add, paste the dash D and Tailwind CSS. Then we need to run npx Tailwind CSS init dash P, paste and run. And in Tailwind config, we need to set content to this. So we can run yarn dev, hide it, go to Tailwind config, and change content to tell it to look into our JSX and JS file. We will also be using a custom font, so let's add it. In our theme, it will be Passion1. To install it, go to fonts.google.com, search for Passion, and you have Passion1. Of course, use the font that you like. To install it, click here, view selected families, Passion1, get embed code. They changed their UI recently. Choose the add import, copy only the at import line, go to index.css and paste it here. By the way, we forgot to add Tailwind here too. Where is the import line? It's just below. Okay, here. And let's add Tailwind import here. Perfect. Now we can go to app.jsx and we will add next to our canvas a UI component that we will create. So first, let's create the component. Go to components, new file, UI jsx export const ui let's return and then let's import it so we don't forget it okay let's go and create our ui here let's get access to our state as a player because we display our ui for each player so we have a variable we'll name it me is equal to my player it's a method from playroom kit so now we have it we will create a box which will be fixed in the middle of the screen. It will loop through all the car models we have. We'll set the key to be the car model. We'll add some styling to make it a bubble. And if it's our car, 
So if our state is car, it's equal to the model, or if we don't have one and the index is zero, so automatically it will select the first one, then we will display a ring around. So we know we, what is the current car we selected. Then we inside that bubble, we display the image of the car and on click, we will call me.setState and we will set the state to the model we just click on it. So to display the image here, we need to create another folder. In public, we'll create a folder named images. Inside we will put cars and the images are coming from the kit. Now inside cars, you should have all the different icons for each cars. Now if we reload, you can see the different icons to select between the different cars. But we click on it, but nothing happened. This is because even if our player state change, we are not causing a re-render that would update it. To force a re-render, we can use use players list with true. So it will re-render one of the player state change. Now if we click on the different ones, you can see it's changing here. But now we need also to change the model we are displaying. Let's go back to our lobby. Here we have the different car and we can change model. It will be equal to player that get state of car. So if it's undefined, it's okay. It will just go like we did here to the first one. Now we can click between the different cars and you have the shadows that is updated. You have the car that is updated. You can see the light effect that looks nice on the ambulance and the police cars. And it's nice, but the space between cars isn't good and we need to highlight the cars on a podium and add some animations. Let's do it. Let's check if the player ID is my ID. So it's my screen currently watching it. If it's the case, we will add a light to add some more intensity on our car. And we'll also add a group to do some sort of podium below our car. So we add a circle geometry. We make it emissive so it will add some bloom to it and a cylinder to be the podium of our car. We need to declare me, like we did in the UI, my player. This is what we have. So we have a podium for this one here and for this one here. But we need to add more space and to put the car on top of the podium. So instead of positioning the cars this way, we do some more complex way. We will use a variable named car spacing and we will center them in the middle of the screen using the player lens divided by two. You can adjust the car spacing to what you like. I will add it to 2.5. Then let's go back to it. And our car, we will need to put it on top. So we will wrap it inside a group. And if it's me, I will put it slightly on the top. Let's close our group here. Till the cars are too close to each other, but we need some space to add more players. So instead, let's reduce the scale to 0.8. Now it's good. Let's try to add another player to see if it fits. Okay. Let's change it. Perfect. Each player has its own screen displayed correctly. Let's add the name of the player on top and a way to edit it so you know which player it is, which friends of yours. So what we do is we add a billboard component. It's a component that is always facing the camera. Then we add a text and we display either player state.name, which is the default name, or player state, and we display player state.name, which is the name that we will create, and player state.profile.name, which is the default name that is, is created by Playroom. So if we don't have a custom name right now, we will display the default one. So we display it in white and we create another one, just slightly position it next to it. We do the same, we display the same thing, but we display it in black. So it adds some 3D. So we are sure based on the light, what is behind the text is visible. Perfect, now we can see the name of the players. Let's add an icon to edit it. To do this, we add an image next to the text. We position it next to the text. We scale it down and it's located in image slash edit. It is in the final code repository. It's just an icon, but don't forget to add it or it won't work. And like we did for the text, we're displaying it one time in white and one time in black transparent. Now we have the icon, but we want it to be only on top of our player. So let's wrap it inside 
player.id is equal to me.id. Perfect. So here it's me. I should be able to click here and squirrel here. Now let's go to our UI to be able to display an edition box to type our username. To be able to share easily state between the UI and the 3D part, we will use Jotai library. So yarn add Jotai. Once it's installed, yarn dev, we hide the terminal. We will create an atom here. It's like a shared state. Export const name editing atom. It's atom of false. So from Jotai. Now on top of our UI, we will add name editing is equal to use atom of name editing atom. So it's like a normal state if we are in name edition or not. And we also create another use state with our player name or the one from the profile name. So we need to have it below me. And this way we'll be able to edit the player name. Now we have those variables. Let's go below everything. If it's name editing, we will display a box on top of everything containing an input to type our username. The value will be name input. And when we change it, we just update the state of name input. But if we hit enter, we will set the state with the new name and close the name edition. Then we will add two buttons, one to cancel it, so we won't update the final name, and one to save it, so we set state with the new name and we close the name edition. Now we need to enable name edition inside the lobby. So go to lobby. Let's get access to name editing with use atom of name editing atom. Name editing, we won't use it, but we will be using set name editing. We will apply it on our image here. On click, we will set name editing. Let's try it. I'm squirrel here. I edit. Wow, wow. I hit enter and my name is updated here and for the other player as well. And let's name that player Tommy. We can also cancel it or go back and save it. And it's updated for all the players. It's very simple to do. It's starting to look nice, that lobby, but we can make it better. We can add some car transition when we change the different car model. So let's do it. What we will do is here, instead of displaying directly the car, we will create a component we will name car switcher and we will pass it the player. We can create in a separate file, but let's do it below, below our component of lobby. We'll create a car switcher. It will take the player. We'll create a container, a reference to our group to make it rotate when we want to be able to animate it. And inside, we display our car model using car model variable. Let's create that car switcher component below our lobby. We could use a separate file, but it's fine. So car switcher, it takes the player. We'll create a group that we'll be able to animate when we change the car. And inside, we display our car using car model. So car model, it's another state containing the car model that was before. So at the beginning, it's our current car. But what we do is we will create a variable named new car. So we get it from the current multiplayer state. And then if it is different, so our current car model that we are displaying is different from the new car, we will create a reference to store the date when the change happened. We store the date inside and we will change the car model only after some duration. So half of our animation, then we will change our state to display the new model. Now what we do is in a use frame, we check the date when we change the car. So we define our total animation time named switch duration. So only at half of it, we change the car. And then if we are before half of the change, we will rotate and scale down into zero. So we will shrink our model. And then if we have passed that switch duration, but it's not over yet, we will rotate slower and slower until the end and we will scale back to the one. And then we just check that our rotation isn't too big and we reset it to zero. So we don't have weird rotation happening at the end of our animation. So if we are over the animation, we just try to lerp it. So it's mostly reach the final position. So now if we change our car, it nicely rotates, shrink and change into another car. To make it more lively, we can add some sound to it and use this when we change car. Create a new folder, name it audios. 
add your audio file. Let's create a file to manage the audio inside the utils. It is folder, new file, audio manager.jsx. We declare an object containing all our audios, the car start, new audio of our audio file. And we create a play audio method, which set the current time at zero, so it restart it, and it plays it. By the way, it's audio. Now we can go back into the lobby, and if new car is different, then we can play our audio with car start audio. And now if we switch our car, we have that nice sound effect. To make the scene more interesting, let's add some camera and light animation. Let's find our orange light. We'll add a reference to it. Ref is equal to animated light. On top of it, we'll create animated light reference. And let's, in a use frame, use the clock to animate our light position using a scene variable. So it will move nicely from left to right. And let's also animate the camera. So we animate it on the x-axis and the y-axis using cos and sin, so it will do nice slow animation like this. Let's have a look at what we have. You can see that because we animate the light, the shadows are also animated and we have that nice slow effect with the camera animation. You can see in the background here we have some issue with that 3D model. To fix it, we can go inside up increase a bit the near property to 0.5 and now we don't have that issue anymore it was a conflict with the z position that we are too close to each other our car selection is ready our character picker is also ready let's add some button to invite our friends and button to start a private game but also a multiplayer game this will happen in ui let's start with the invite button first we will need a state when we will click on the button we will show we have copied the link in the clipboard. Then we create an invite method. What it will do is copy the location of our room inside the clipboard, and then it will set invited to true, so we will display to the user that information. And then in a set timeout, after two seconds, we will stop and we will re-enable the button to be able to copy the URL. Let's put our button next to the name editing here. So we create a button on the top right, on click, it will call our invite method we created, and it's disabled when invited is true. So it's when we are displaying that we invited the user. So if we are invited, if it's not the case, it's the button to call invite. But if we are in invited states, we will display instead link copied to clipboard. Let's try it. We have the invite button here. We click on it. We have link copied to clipboard. If I go to the address bar and I paste, I have the URL correctly set. I found the icon on hero icon, for example, plus in this one, user plus. Now we want to add the two other button to start the game, either in private with only my friends or in public to join matchmaking and play with anyone online. Let's create a multiplayer state named game state with a default value of a lobby. So it's coming from playroom kit. It's like a state, but it's shared over a network. So we have game state and set game state. Now let's go next to our invite button. And we will add only if we are in the lobby, a zone on the bottom right of our screen. It will contain a first button for starting private game. And on click, what we will do is set game state to loading. Then we will wait a bit just to be able to show a nice transition. We could start the game directly, but it's just for visual purpose and then set game state to game. Then we create another button for online to join the matchmaking. On click, it will be an async method. We set the game state to loading. This time it will really load data and it will try to find another room to join or it will create our room. If we are the only player, it will create one new room. We will call await start matchmaking and when it resolve, we will set the game state to game. Let's go to our experience. Let's get access to our multiplayer state with use multiplayer state of game state. We also use the default value to lobby. And now we will render conditionally either our lobby if it's in lobby state or our game component. But we don't have a game component right now. So let's create it. New file game.jsx. Let's do export const game and we'll return a group for now. Let's go to experience and import game. 
So let's add another one here, invite at bottom split, paste the URL. We have a second player. Let's change its car and run a private game. And you can see we land here because our scene is empty, but it's working fine. We want to be able to change our car, but we don't want the invite button. So let's remove it. So I think here it's a check if we are in the lobby. We'll put our button inside too, but we will need this to create an empty fragment. Okay, we now are in our empty game and we can choose cars, but we can't invite anymore. Perfect. Just before creating our game, we will create a nice transition when it's the loading state. Inside our UI, we create a new state that we name loading slide. In a use effect, if our game state changes, we will set loading slide to true. Whatever happens, we want to show that loading slide. But if it's not loading, which means we want to show back something, either the lobby or the game, then after one second, we will set loading slide to false. And we call clear timeout if game state change fastly. We want it to happen only once. Let's create a div to display our loading slide. So it's fixed on top of the screen and centering content. But if it's displayed, we don't do anything. But if it's not, we translate it to make it disappear from our screen. Then we add some content inside. So just vroom vroom, which is the name of our game. And to show some loading, we iterate through the different images. To have the different index of the images, we create a loading content variable. In a use effect, when loading slide change and that loading slide is true, which is which means we display this, we change the image based on the size of all the cars available. And every 200 milliseconds, we change the car we are displaying. And then we clear the interval when loading slide becomes false. Now, if we reload our game, we have that nice animation showing the game. And if we start an online game, it will show the loader for everyone. And we have an issue because only host can start matchmaking or write. We should display private and online only to the host. So let's add that check. In the UI, we can check if is host from Playroom Kit. And only if it's the case, we display that div here. So now if we do online, you can see the URL changed and all player joined and it disappears. Now we can jump into the game. For the game map, I created one nice city using city builder bits from K. Lewisberg. Link will be in the description. And with the free tier, we have access to the first one with some buildings and some road. Ideal for what we are doing. In Blender, I loaded some roads, some buildings to create a map. Just be careful about if you want to create your own map, of course, I will share mine with you, that the position is perfectly aligned. You don't have 2.001. You need them to be very precise. If it's not, adjust the position here to be exactly precise so you don't have gaps between the different chunks. Let's add the map inside the public and models folder. It's named map.glb. Let's import it. In our game component, gltf source is equal to models slash map.glb. When we are in the game, it's completely black. Let's add some lights. Let's put them below lights. And I prepared some lights. I also add an environment with a light former to create some nice reflection over our car when it will be here. So this is what we have. We should define the background to black so it will blend nicely. Go to app inside the canvas and set this black. Not pure black, but very dark. Okay, now it's better. We can't move anymore because we don't have camera controls here. Let's enable it temporarily. Maybe even orbit control should be enough just for debugging purpose. We can then rotate it here. Okay, nice. We can see our map. Before adding the cars, let's add physics using React 3 Rapier. Yarn add at React 3 Rapier. Once it's done, yarn dev. And we don't need physics on everything. So we don't need to wrap uh, everything in app or experience. We only want the physics to be in our game. So let's use the physics that create a physics world around our map currently. Then we will add our cars too. And now let's add a rigid body to make collisions happening on our building and our road. 
to be able to visually see it, we add the debug and we wrap our map inside a rigid body. We set the colliders to be three mesh for the moment and we will rotate it to be in the right side of my dot pi. But if we start it now, it is falling because gravity is applied. We need to add type is equal to fixed. Now we can see that we have our rigid body. We have all those lines showing us the colliders. But it's a bit too precise when you are using tree mesh. We don't need to be that much precise for collisions. We can use hull. It's like wrapping everything around a gift wrapper. So now you can see it's less precise. It's around the building, but not around everything perfectly. But it's in-house for our game and performance-wise, it's better. Now let's try to add our car. First, we need to create our array of players within a state. And in a use effect on player join from Playroom Kit, we'll create a joystick. It will display a joystick on the screen of the user and share its state between all the different clients for multiplayer. We will add a button for respawn if we are in a bad position or if we fall, for example. Then we create our new player containing the player state and the joystick, the control to be able to move our car. And we add our player to the array of players. Then on kit, we remove the player from the players list. Now we have our players inside the physics. We loop through each players and we will create a car controller component containing the state of the player and the controls to be able to see the joystick in which direction it is for each player. Let's create our car controller component. New file car controller.jsx. Let's export it. It has the state and controls. Let's return a group for now. Now go to our game and import correctly the car controller. Let's display our car model. So what we do is we use use player state using our state we have. We want the car property and we get it inside car model. Then we render our car with the right car model. Then we want to add a camera if it's us. So const me is equal my player. And if it's me, then I will add a perspective camera behind my car. Now we have our car. We can even change during the game. We don't have the animation, it's just smooth. But let's use the stick to be able to move our car. First of all, we need to add physics around our car. So we need to wrap it inside a rigid body. Let's do it here, a rigid body with a collider's hull, like we did for the map, and a reference to it that we name rigid body. So let's create the reference. RB is equal to use ref. Now you can see we have the rigid body on our car, but if we change the car, we have the previous rigid body because it's not recalculated. To be sure we have a new one when the car model change, we use the key property and pass car model. Now let's try to change and it's a new wrapper around our car. So it's ready to use to animate our car movement. To choose the right value for the car speed, we will add leva to be able to add debug on the top right. Yarn dev, we can hide it. We want to have a rotation speed and car speed. We are using use controls to be able to choose them dynamically when trying different values. Then in a use frame, we need to have access to the camera and delta. If we don't have a rigid body, we don't do anything. Then if we have one, we want to get the current rotation velocity. Then if the joystick is pressed by any player, what we do is we get the angle based on the direction of the angle will go in one direction or another and we will rotate toward that joystick position. Then we will create an impulse. It's the force we will apply to our car on the z-axis to go based on the direction either forward or backward and based on the car speed multiplied by delta so the frame rate doesn't have any impact on the car speed between different players. Then we rotate the impulse based on our angle here. So the car goes in the right direction and we apply it on our car. Then we set the velocity of our rotation to rotate the car. And if we are the host, what we do is we set the state for all the multiplier clients so they can have all the same thing displayed on screen and not everyone is calculating it. If we are not, 
we will just move our client locally, but then we will rely on the networking position. And that is set by the host. So here it's using the one that it get from the remote state. Now let's try it. We can move our car in both sides. It's looking nice, but the camera is always looking at zero, zero. So we have weird behavior. To fix it, let's create a vector that we name look at. We store it inside a reference. And then only if it is our screen, not for the other players, we will have a target look at, which is where our rigid body is. Then we will lerp our look at toward that direction. So it's a smooth transition, not abrupt. And then on our camera that we get here, we look at look at dot current. So that vector free that we lerped. Now we can drive and see our car moving. Let's try different cars. For example, the ambulance, it's not moving. It requires more power because the collider is bigger. So the mass is also bigger. It needs more power. Let's try a bigger one. And now it's moving. Not enough, but it's moving. Now it's fine. So you can try every car and find the right values. Then define an object named car speed and you store for each car the value that suits best. And then in impulse, instead of using the global car speed, you can do car speeds of car model if you have one. And if you don't have one, use the default car speed. Then now you can try the ambulance. You don't have to change the value. It doesn't have an impact anymore because I already set up that value. Let's try to have two players. I will copy it here, open another one. And we need to add the spawn one because it appeared at the wrong position. But it's working well. You can have two players. It's nice. Let's create a respawn method. If we are the host, only the host will do it. We'll set the current translation randomly on the map. But I'm using multiply by four. So it's never on a building. It's just on the road between minus two and two multiplied by four. And then we stop the speed so we don't spawn being full speed. We reset the rotation, everything. Then in a use effect, we call respawn. So when we start our player, it starts at a random position. But also inside our use frame here, if control is pressed respawn, we will call the respawn method. So now this player is at a weird position. Let's try the spawn and perfect even if we fall badly. Before removing the debug of the rigid body, let's add that when we fall, we reappear on the map without pushing the spawn button. To do that on our game, let's create a rigid body. This rigid body, we want to be fixed as a sensor, so it won't impact the physics, but just to detect collision. We won't have a default colliders, we will set up manually, and we will put it below the ground. We'll name it void, to know that it's when we fall in the void. And we create a cuboid collider to be below. We can visually see it together. Now, if we zoom out, you can see that we have that collider that has no impact on our game. But if our car will fall into it, we can detect the collision and call the respawn method. Let's go on to our car controller. Then on the rigid body, we add an intersection enter. We get the name of the other rigid body object. If it's void, then we call respawn. Let's try it. We drive our car. We jump, we fall, and we reappear anywhere on the map. Our game looks almost ready. Let's go to game, remove the debug so we won't see it anymore. And also in app, we can add lever and hidden so it won't show it anymore. Now it looks better without the debug UI. Let's try it on mobile. Oh, just before, inside our game, we can disable orbit controls, so we won't be able to impact the camera. OK, now let's try it on mobile. So the simplest way is to run yarn dev dash dash host. Then you have a network URL you can use and access your project locally. But me, I can't use it because I'm at my office and the network is secured, I can do it. Instead, I will show you another way to do it. I'm using a package named local tunnel. I just have to install it globally with dash G local tunnel. And when it's done, you can run LT dash dash port and 5173. So it's the port where the game is running currently, 5173. 
then it generates a URL. I copy it, then I open it on my mobile phone. I need a tunnel password. So I just have to follow that link here, copy it inside my clipboard, copy, open the tab, paste it in tunnel password, and click to submit. Then it's opening me my game remotely. I have the game on my phone. I can switch between different products. I can run private. And I have the game running fine. On my mobile, I can enjoy the game. Can switch cars. Perfect. And if you fall, you have the spawn button. Same if you fall anywhere. Thank you for watching. I hope you will build amazing multiplayer games with exciting lobbies. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button to help other developers discover it. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss my upcoming video tutorials. I promise you very exciting projects are coming. In the meantime, you can browse my existing ones like this video, available here.